Hi, I'm Kenny Joya. Welcome to another one of my tutorials. In this video, I'm going to show you how to remap MIDI notes or controllers in Reaper. Now, in most situations, the reason for doing this is for remapping drum pads, either on a MIDI controller or actually using a MIDI drum kit. Sometimes the pads default to different MIDI notes than the ones you want to use. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to change that. So let's start off by creating a MIDI instrument or a virtual instrument plugin. We'll make a new track. We'll go to our effects. We'll go down to instruments. And I'm going to choose this one here, Contact 5. This is the free version of this plugin. We'll choose this, and then we'll choose a drum sound. Let's choose one here. I'll choose the Funk Kit, drag it over. Now I'm going to switch the MIDI input to Omni, so it'll input on all MIDI channels. The reason for this is the controller that I'm using, which is an Axiom 49, sends the drum pads on MIDI channel 10. So to make it easier, I'll just set this to Omni, so it'll receive on all channels. Then we'll go to our track, set up the MIDI input there. We'll choose all channels. And now if I go into record and play my keyboard, I should hear the drums. And we do. Now if I use the drum pads instead, I still hear the sounds, but I only have eight pads. And this preset has a lot more sounds to choose from. Let's say for the snare, we want to use a side stick. With this preset, that's C sharp. But the pad for the snare defaults to D. So I get a snare sound instead of a side stick. So let's change that. Now we're going to do this with a JS plugin. Now we can put that plugin on this track before this instrument, but if we do that, it's going to record the wrong notes and fix them later. So it might make editing a little more confusing. The better way to do it is to put the plugin on the input effects, which are right over here. These plugins actually get recorded. So the MIDI notes we change are going to be changed in the result. So let's add an input effects plugin. Click here, and we're going to go to the filter under all plugins and type MIDI. And we'll scroll down to here to MIDI map to key. And we're going to choose version 2, as it has more options. And that opens up this plugin. So we'll change the input channel to 10, because like I said before, my controller outputs channel 10 for the drum pads. So now if I hit the drum pad, you see the result right here. This is C3, or number 36. Now if I hit the snare, or the second pad, I get the snare drum, which is D3, or 38. This is the MIDI note we want to switch. We want to change it to C sharp 3, which I could hit on the MIDI keyboard. And that's number 37. So we want to switch 38 and 37 on the MIDI mapping. And we could do that with the mapping file right here. Now, right now, it's using default mapping. So every note corresponds to the normal MIDI key which makes sense, but we want to change that. So let's go to our menu, under Options, and go down here to Show Reaper Resource Path. If we choose this, it opens up your Finder or your Directory, where all the Reaper files are on your computer. We're going to go here to Data, and the Key Maps. And here's the default mapping. It shows up as a text file. We can double-click it. It opens up in my default text editor and we can edit it right here. As you can see, by default, they all line up. So number 24 lines up with 24, and so on. But we don't want to change the default mapping. So what we're going to do instead is close this and duplicate it. And we'll change the name to 01 Side Stick Mapping. So it's going to remap so we can use the side stick. And we'll change this file instead. Let's go back to Reaper and double check those numbers. When we play the D, it's number 38. When we play the C sharp, it's 37. 
So we want to switch 37 and 38. We'll open the duplicated file, find 37 and 38, and we're going to switch them right over here. This will be 38, and this will be 37. Now we'll save it. Now if we go back to Reaper, the duplicated mapping doesn't show up yet. We have to reinstantiate the plugin. The easiest way to do this is to right click, put it offline, and then bring it back online. And then it'll show up right here, side stick mapping. So now if I hit my second pad on my controller, it plays the side stick. The input is D3 or 38, but the output is C sharp 3 or 37. So now I can play a pattern with my drum pads using the side stick. Now if I go to pad 3 and pad 4, it's an open hi-hat and a closed hi-hat. But for me, they're in the wrong order. I prefer it to be reversed. A closed hi-hat on pad 3 and an open hi-hat on pad 4. So we can switch that around as well. Let's check out the numbers. The open hat is 46, and the closed hat is 42. Let's switch those around. Go to 46, make it 42, and go to 42, and make it 46. Then we'll save it. Now if we go back to Reaper, it's not automatically changed. We have to reload it right here. Reload now. And now if I hit drum pad 3, it's the closed hi-hat. And pad 4 is the open hi-hat. And you can see what happens right here. Note in, note out. Let's change a few more things. Let's say I wanted to record a really fast hi-hat pattern, like 16th notes or 32nd notes. That can be hard to do with just one pad. So let's change it to use two pads for the same sound. Let's go to pad 7, which is a ride cymbal, which is set to 51. We want to change that to also play the closed hi-hat, which is 42. So let's change that as well. We'll go to 51 right here and make this 42. So now notice we have two 42s, this one and this one. So we're going to have two drum pads playing the same sound. Save it. Reload it right here. Now if I hit pad 7, it's also a closed hi-hat. So now I could use two pads to play the same sound, making it a bit easier to play 16th notes or even 32nd notes, just by alternating those two pads, pad 3 and pad 7. And let's change one more pad. If I hit pad 8, we get a crash symbol, which is set to C sharp 4. But I want to use a splash instead. So let's find the splash on the keyboard. It's B flat 4. So we want to change 49 to output 58 right here. Save it, reload it, and now if I hit pad 8, I get the splash instead of the crash. And it's all saved in this file. So we can create as many different maps as we want, depending on which sounds you want to use. And like I said earlier, it'll work with MIDI controllers, with drum pads, a dedicated drum pad unit, or even electronic drums that you actually play. And because we're recording it on the input, let's close this. Let's record some drums. All the notes are recorded correctly based on the notes that they're actually triggering, not what you're actually playing. So when we played our side stick, even though we played D2, it shows up here as D sharp 2. And the same with our hi-hat. It's F sharp. 
And the open hi-hat is B flat. And the same with our splash. So the notes are being recorded correctly because the notes are changing on the way in using the input effects chain. And again, we can save and create as many MIDI maps as we want. Just duplicate them here, rename them, and we can edit them based on the sounds we want to trigger or record. So that's pretty much it. That's remapping MIDI notes or MIDI controllers or even a MIDI electronic drum kit in Reaper. I hope you learned something. I hope you can use it. And I'll see you next time. Thanks. Mm -hmm.